Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 7.5, Compare Fraction Factors and Products. The essential question for this lesson is, how does the size of the product compare to the size of one factor when multiplying fractions? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 7.5, found on page 153, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number one. As you can see, question number one has already been completed for us, but I want to make sure you understand the thought process behind the answer to question one. Our job is to complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. The problem is the fraction 3 fifths times the fraction 4 sevenths, and it says it will be blank than the fraction 4 sevenths. Now, they want you to think about this. 4 sevenths, the fraction 4 sevenths, is being multiplied by a number less than 1. It's being multiplied by the fraction 3 fifths, which is less than 1. So what it means is the product of 3 fifths times 4 sevenths will be less than the fraction 4 sevenths. Because when you find a part of a part, which means a fraction times a fraction, the product will always be less than either of those two parts. So once again, what we know is 3 fifths times the fraction 4 sevenths will be less than 4 sevenths. Now, let's start out by taking a look at question number two. For question two, the directions say complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. Well, for question two, the problem is the whole number five times the fraction seven eighths will be blank. So we have to decide whether it's equal to, greater than, or less than the fraction seven eighths. Now, what we know is this, and what I want you to think about is, when a fraction, in this case it's 7 eighths is our fraction, is multiplied by a number greater than 1. And in this problem, that number is a 5, which is greater than 1. The product will always be greater than the fraction. Now, I want to show you why this would make sense. I'm going to go ahead and use models to show 5 times 7 eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw five rectangular fraction boxes. So we're going to go ahead and we'll start out here. So we have one, two, three, four, five boxes. Now, I'm drawing five boxes because once again, our whole number is five. Now, in each one of those boxes, I need to now represent the fraction seven eighths. So I'm going to divide those boxes into eight equal parts. So let's go ahead and divide our boxes into eight equal parts. I'm going to draw a line right down the middle, here and here, and then I'm going to draw two more lines here and here. So we now have that rectangle divided into eight equal parts. So I'm going to do the same thing for each of those boxes. So here's rectangle number two, and then also number three, and then we have number four, and also number five. Now, I now have one, two, three, four, five boxes that are divided equally into eight parts because once again, our fraction is seven eighths. Now, what I'm gonna do next is this. I'm now gonna shade in seven of those eight equal parts. I'm gonna have you pause the video and we'll check our models together in just a minute. So go ahead and pause now and I want you to shade in seven eighths for each of those five rectangular bo boxes. Now, hopefully your models look like mine. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of my boxes in each of those five rectangles shaded in. So what that means is I have seven times one, two, three, four, five, and I know that seven times five is gonna give me 35. So when I multiply five times seven eighths, I know I'm gonna get 35 as my numerator because 35 of those boxes are shaded in. And remember, our denominator stays the same. So I end up with 35 eighths as the product. Now, I know that I can turn 35 eighths, the improper fraction, into a mixed number. And what I know is this. Eight goes into 35 four whole times. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down the whole number four. And I know that eight times four is 32, so I have three left over. So that numerator is gonna become a three and my denominator is still gonna be the eight. So the product of five times seven eighths turns out to be four and three eighths. And what I know is four and three eighths is going to be greater than the fraction seven eighths. 
So I know that I can now plug in greater than in my blank. So let's go ahead and write that together. We know that 5 times 7 eighths will be greater than 7 eighths. And we now have our answer. Now let's take a look at question number four. Once again, the directions say complete the statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. Now for number four, we have the fraction one ninth times the whole number one, and it says it will be blank to one ninth. So we have to decide, is it going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the fraction one ninth? Well, what I know is this, and what I want you to think about is this. The product of one, in this case we have our one, and any fraction, in this case it's one ninth, will be equal to that fraction because of the identity property of multiplication. Now let me show you why that makes sense. We're going to go ahead and draw a model here. Now remember, our product is one ninth times one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a rectangle again and in this time I'm going to draw just one rectangle because our problem is one ninth times the whole number one. So let's go ahead and draw one rectangle together. So I want you guys to go ahead and do the same thing. So there is our one rectangle to represent the whole number one. Now because our fraction is one ninth, I now need to divide that rectangle into nine equal parts. Let's go ahead and divide our rectangle into nine equal parts. So that means I'm going to draw eight lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. So now our rectangle is divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine equal parts. Now because my fraction is one ninth, I now need to shade in one of those nine parts. So we're going to go ahead and shade in one of those parts together. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shade here that first part so we're going to shade in one of those parts. Now what I have is a model that represents one ninth multiplied by the whole number one. Well, what I know is when I look at this model, I know that one ninth is also being shown. So that tells me in this case, one ninth times the whole number one is going to be equal to the fraction one ninth. So let's go ahead and write that in together. Once again, one ninth will be equal to, so we're going to go ahead and write in equal to, the fraction one ninth. And once again, I also know that the product of one and any fraction is always going to be equal to that fraction because of the identity property of multiplication. Now let's take a look at question number six. Once again, our job is to complete this statement with equal to, greater than, or less than. Well, for question six, they give us the fraction four fifths times the fraction seven sevenths, and it says it will be blank two four fifths. So once again, we have to decide, is the product of these two fractions going to be equal to, greater than, or less than the fraction four-fifths? Well, I want to go back and look at my problem again, and what I see is this. I have four-fifths times the fraction seven-sevenths. Well, what I know is, anytime my numerator and my denominator are the same numbers, I can rewrite that fraction as the whole number one. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my problem as four-fifths times the whole number one. Now remember, think like we did on the last question. I know that the product of one and any fraction, in this case it's four fifths, will be equal to that fraction because of the identity property of multiplication. Now let's draw a quick model to make sure we understand why that makes sense. Once again, my whole number is a one, so I'm going to draw just one rectangle. So I want you guys to go ahead and draw with me. Here is our rectangle. Now, I'm going to go ahead and divide that into five equal parts because my denominator is a five. So that means we're going to go ahead and draw four lines. So one, two, three, four. So we now have that rectangle divided into one, two, three, four, five equal parts because our denominator is a five. Now, my numerator is a 4, so that means I'm going to shade in 4 of those parts. So I want you guys to go ahead and shade with me as well, and let's go ahead and shade in 4 of those parts. So we'll start to shade here, so there's 4 of those parts being shaded in. Now, once again, what I have is a model that represents the fraction 4 fifths times 1. And what I know is my model also shows 1, 2, 3, 4, out of my five equal parts shaded in. So that tells me that my model also represents the fraction four-fifths. So I know that four-fifths 
times 7 sevenths, also known as the whole number 1, will be equal to 4 fifths. Let's go ahead and fill in our blank and we're going to go ahead and write down equal to and once again I want to go back to our property because I also know that the product of 1 and any fraction will always be equal to that fraction because of the identity property of multiplication. Now let's take a look at question number 7. It's one of our real world problem solving questions and it says Starla is making hot cocoa. She plans to multiply the recipe by 4 to make enough hot cocoa for the whole class. If the recipe calls for half teaspoon vanilla extract, will she need more than half teaspoon or less than half a teaspoon of vanilla extract to make all the hot cocoa? So what we know is this. We know that Starla plans to multiply the recipe by 4. And we know that the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So our problem is 4 times our 1 half. And the question is, it, will she need more than 1 half or less than 1 half of a teaspoon to make all the hot cocoa? So we have to decide, is 4 times 1 half going to be more than or less than that half? Now, Let's talk about something we need to think about here. I know that when a fraction, and in this case our fraction is 1 half, is multiplied by a number greater than 1, and in this case that's a 4, the product of those two, the 4 and the 1 half, will always be greater than the fraction. Now I want to show you with a model why that makes sense. So because my whole number is a 4, we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw 4 rectangles. Now remember, we're going to divide those 4 rectangles into half. And I want you to shade in one half of each of those four. So I'm going to have you go ahead and draw the models and go ahead and do your shading uh, and we'll check in just a minute. So go ahead and pause your video now and draw and shade those models. Now hopefully your models look like mine. We have one, two, three, four of our rectangles drawn to represent the whole number four. We divided them in half. We need two parts because our denominator is a two. So here's one, two parts and we've shaded in one of those parts because our numerator is a 1. Now when I make a count, here's what I know. There's 1, 2, 3, 4 parts that are shaded in. So 4 becomes my numerator. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the 4. Now remember, our denominator stays the same, so I'm going to make that 4 over 2. Well, I know that that's an improper fraction, so I'm going to go ahead and, and turn that or simplify that. I know that 2 goes into 4 2 whole times. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the whole number 2. And I also know that 2 times 2 is 4, so there's no fraction part left over. Now, that when I look at the whole number 2, I also know that the whole number 2 is greater than, let's go ahead and write down the greater than symbol, it's greater than the fraction 1 half. So what I know is this. I know that 4 times the fraction 1 half is going to be more than, so let's go ahead and write down more than in our blank, so we know it's going to be more than, and it's more than our one-half. Now, your homework for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six, finding your GoMath workbook on page 154. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one a novice? number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert. Don't forget your homework for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two as well as numbers three through six found in your GoMath workbook on page 154. We hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.